The near-death experience, also known as NDE, is a timeless, transformative event that has fascinated humanity since antiquity. They occur when a person comes close to death or is pronounced dead, entailing a subjective testimony by the survivor of going beyond the boundaries of ordinary existence. Held captive by the threshold between life and death, these survivors report a hidden doorway that beckons them into a spiritual landscape of profound encounters and inexplicable phenomena. In this video, I will be introducing the topic, briefly examining both empirical and religious perspectives to unravel these mysterious events. Firstly, I will recite the testimony of a man who underwent his own near-death experience. All of a sudden, I was standing at the foot of the bed, looking at my own body. I knew it was me in bed because there were certain features I could recognise easily. I felt no pain at all. I was a bit puzzled. I wasn't anxious or worried. I just didn't understand what I was doing at the foot of the bed. Then I was travelling. I was at the entrance of a tunnel. There was a light at the end of the tunnel just like sunlight. I had a feeling of comfort and all the pain was gone. And I had a desire to go towards the light. I seemed to float along in a horizontal position. When I reached the other end, I was in a strange place. Everything was beautiful, yet it was more of a feeling rather than a seeing. I could see other people. They ignored me completely, and the next thing I heard, a voice saying, You must go back. It is not your time. Afterwards, I seemed to think that it was my father speaking, but this may have been imagination. Then I was in my bed. There was no sensation of moving back. It was just as though I woke up and all the pain was back, and the hospital staff were working on me. In this account, many features present themselves that make the NDE a unique life event. These will be explored soon, but first, I will briefly share how the NDE has been defined. It is in the past 40 years that the NDE has been most recognised and studied. Interestingly, research has found that this phenomenon is not exclusive to any demographic variables such as age, geographical location, or race and ethnicity, nor is it necessarily more or less likely to occur at any specific time in life for an individual. It was in 1975 when NDEs were formally introduced and subsequently popularised by Dr. Raymond Moody. His best-selling book, Life After Life, defined the NDE as any conscious perceptual experience which takes place during an event in which a person could very easily die or be killed, and may even be so close as to be believed or pronounced clinically dead, but nonetheless survives and continues physical life. Later, due to developments in his research, he extended his definition to clarify there also being a spiritual component. Furthermore, the NDE can occur in either medical settings such as cardiac arrest, or non-medical settings such as non-fatal diseases and minor or serious accidents. Concerning Moody's research findings, he managed to document more than 100 NDE cases through interviews, finding that several common phenomenological features present themselves during the experience. Some primary features include the following. Out-of-body experience. This is the sensation of one's own physical body being described as elevated or externalised from its natural state. Accompanied by this is sometimes the ability to observe their own body from afar and or the actions of those nearby. Travelling through a tunnel or void. Many report entering or envisioning themselves travelling through a dark or bright tunnel with feelings of peacefulness and serenity often attached to the experience. Encountering deceased loved ones or spiritual entities. Many report encountering and communicating with the dead and entities that are not from the natural world. Generally, this is followed by a vivid sense of love and guidance. A profound feeling of peace and joy. Many report a vivid separation from pain and anxiety during their NDE, despite their physical body being in a critical condition. Panoramic life review. Many report a life review during their NDE, whereby their past flashes before their eyes. This can be followed by a sense of existential clarity, which sometimes entails a choice between entering death and or the afterlife, or returning to life for loved ones or personal redemption. Something to keep in mind is that not all of these features present themselves at once, nor do they necessarily manifest in the same way. In his book, Moody made it clear that no two NDEs are identical and that not all features ought to be expected to appear for each person. As established, those who undergo a near-death experience often report phenomenological features which question the reality we usually take for granted. However, it usually doesn't just stop there. 
Once the person awakes from the ordeal, they frequently undergo the following changes in their life. Personal growth and transformation. Most survivors use their close brush with death to amend things in their lives that they perhaps neglected before their NDE, such as going on to change jobs, spending more time with family and close friends, and seeking out new and novel experiences that they had always wanted to do. Others even go on to spread awareness of this phenomenon, becoming lifelong advocates of NDE research and trying to find others to compare and support experiences. Enhanced spirituality. Many survivors believe that they did not die because a god or some other entity did not intend for it to happen. Taking this opportunity to live life to the fullest unlike before, and in many cases pledging allegiance to a higher power for the rest of their life. Despite many hitherto atheists going on to convert to religion after their NDE, some also merely become more spiritual rather than convert to a religion. Increased empathy and compassion. There are frequent reports of the survivor feeling more empathy and compassion for not only their family members and other loved ones, but for everyone else. The sense of unity and love they felt in their NDE later compels them to lead by example, especially if they are convinced a benevolent god exists. Despite NDEs typically presenting themselves as an overly positive experience, it's worth mentioning that not all NDEs are pleasant to undergo. This is called the negative NDE with a minority of individuals reporting the event resembling a nightmare or being hellish. The following is from a case study in 1988 whereby a woman in her late 40s had a car accident. I started walking down the aisle, and I was frightened. There were many pews on each side, and each pew was filled with people wearing black robes with hoods. I couldn't see their faces, but if I turned my eyes I could see the inside of the hoods were lined with red. There was no sound at all. I kept walking and walking and then came to three steps which I went up, then walked a little further. I then saw what looked like an altar on which were six silver goblets and a big silver jug. I stood there wondering where I was and what I was doing there when a door opened to the right of the altar and out came the devil. He came over to the altar, looked me straight in the eye and told me to pick up a goblet. I picked up a goblet and he picked up the big silver jug and started pouring. I saw that what he was pouring from the jug was fire, and I screamed, dropped the goblet, and started to run. I just ran and ran. I didn't know where I was running to, and then I saw a big fence, a stone fence, and the gates opened, and I passed through. Then I came to another fence made out of iron bars, and that just opened, and again I ran through. All the time I was getting warmer and warmer and brighter and brighter. As we heard from her account, the experience resembled a nightmare before it went on to resemble the positive features such as the feeling of warmth and brightness of a typical NDE. The exact reason why a minority of people experience this remains a mystery. Now some phenomenological features and after effects of the typical NDE have been outlined, as well as the rare negative NDE, what conclusions can be drawn? Either the NDE implies the existence of an afterlife, and perhaps a god's presence in the universe, or it could be down to the brain's neurochemical misfirings from being in a critical state. First, I will address the transcendental perspective. Those who posit there being a supernatural cause to NDEs believe they offer a glimpse into a spiritual or metaphysical reality that is beyond our physical world. Both Christianity and Islam contain scriptural affirmations of those who undergo an NDE, as the scriptures frequently resemble the existence of a soul, the afterlife, or encounters with divine entities. Under this view, the NDE is a purposeful event which supports intelligent design from God rather than it being a product of spontaneous hallucinations or neurochemical misfirings. The barrier that makes this line of reasoning difficult to follow is that there is a lack of empirical evidence for these conclusions. The experiencer is, in effect, the only person who has access to what they perceived. Now considering the naturalistic perspective, this is instead founded on empirical observation and inferences from our understanding of material reality. Researchers have found that factors such as reduced oxygen supply, abnormal brain activity, or the release of certain chemicals can trigger hallucination and vivid sensory experiences that resemble transcendental features. Thus, the onset of mystical events occurring for someone is not necessarily due to a transcendent entity ordaining them, but rather a result of natural brain misfunction. Susan Blackmore, for instance, believes that NDEs can be adequately explained by physiological factors alone. 
She postulated that when someone is dying during an NDE and their body neurons fire randomly, since there are more neurons associated with the peripheral vision than the center, this creates the illusion of a tunnel or void forming in a person's perception. But whilst logically appealing, this explanation fails to address why not all persons report seeing tunnels and others perceive pathways or roads instead. Ultimately, this argument lacks explanatory power for more nuanced NDE accounts. So, both sides of the argument have their shortcomings. However, there is another avenue to contemplate. Both perspectives could be combined with both natural and supernatural elements contributing to an NDE. Neurological processes, for example, could lay the foundation for the experience whilst the interpretation and spiritual aspects may be influenced by cultural and personal beliefs. It may be argued that just because we know the underlying process of what physiologically happens during an NDE, this doesn't negate the possibility of the two working together to create a possibly transcendent experience. But even this suggests has faults, since accounts vary on which god or gods are encountered during the ordeal, with some even denying any supernatural elements were present during their own NDE. To conclude, whilst we have physiological and testimonial evidence of NDEs being a genuine phenomenon, ascertaining any degree of certainty about the spiritual nature of these events may never be possible. This is because demonstrating something potentially supernatural using naturalistic measurements, i.e. scientific apparatus, is a practical drawback when the only source of evidence relies on subjective testimonies. Without the supernatural mechanisms being made available for scientific measurement, it is unlikely that any concrete proof will surface. One side maintains that these extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, with the other replying that the absence of evidence isn't necessarily evidence of absence. In any case, whether we conclude near-death experiences are sufficient evidence of an afterlife or the existence of a god, it is nevertheless undeniable that the impact of the event provokes a fundamental shift in values followed by a profound life transformation. For now, however, the full nature and perhaps the spiritual implications of these experiences remain a mystery. I've been James Bergman, also known as Head of the Curve. I hope you found this video to be interesting and or useful. If you have any of your own thoughts on this topic that you would like to share, then feel free to comment below. If you want to support this channel to help me produce more content like this, then the links to my Patreon and PayPal are in the description. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to this channel for more, and don't forget to leave a like if you haven't already. Stay tuned for the next video.